million pesos. Ang signatures na kailangan natin sa Amerika, about 210 signatures. Meron na kami mga 180 signatures na nilakad ng mga veterano. I went to Washington twice to argue the case in the U.S. Senate and in the U.S. House of Representatives. I met with the first round and within the next few months. Kasi since 1946, ang mga veterano ng Filipino hindi nabigyan ng justisya sa Kongreso ng Amerika na pinangako yan ni Presidente Roosevelt. Ngayon, we are about to achieve this victory. Thank you. Okay. Last reaction from uh, Mr. Dimlaw. Alam mo, nakakahiya na meron ng batas na mag, may dapat bigay ang mga kwalang benefits sa veteran at hindi natutupad. Nakakahiya po. We don't have to go to the United States to do this. All we have to do is implement at kung sa budget po naman, ay uh, all you have to do is remove all the wasteful spend. At babalikan ko yung pork barrel, mga visible, invisible pork barrel. Kapag daming pangalan, may full vaulting strategy, may national unification fund, may calamity fund, kung ano-ano ang pangalan, dapat tanggalin na mga wasteful spending para ibigay na natin ang karapatan ng veterano. Mga kaibigan, magbabalik po kami para sa karagdagang pang pagkikipagsapatan. Makalipas lamang pala sa Diyos. Ano? Nandyan ba kayo? Mabalik! Sa ba kayo yan? Welcome! Welcome to uh, Life's a Beach. I'm Francis M. And of course, uh, we have a very special guest. Welcome to our election specials. Our guest for today was a former uh, DAR secretary and of course, uh, former ID Bureau of Immigration and Deportation Commissioner. She's also a senator and uh, was a presidential candidate back in 92. And she's also currently running May 11, 1998 for president once again. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senator Miriam Defensor Santiago. Hello, ma'am. Hi, Francis. I remember we had a great deal of fun in 1992 when you sang at my proclamation <laughs> rally, and I hope you'll do that when I'm inaugurated at June 30. God willing. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, you know, some say that you should have been the, the rightful president. What can you say about this? Uh, with all the uh, rumors about um, the votes that were added, you know? Well, I've always taken the position that in 1992, I in the voting, but I didn't counting because of electoral fraud, which in the instance is called Operation Dagdag Bao. But all of this in the hands of divine providence, just doing what I can. Okay, well, uh, let's get too hot for comfort. Ma'am, who does your uh, hair and makeup? You look <laughs> lovely today. <laughs> well, my hair too is done by somebody called Nympha Ferrer. Yes. She has a beauty parlor, which she shared with me here in um, Green Hills. And my makeup is done by my own niece. She used to be a fashion model. Her name is Grace Katig. There you have it. That's uh, hair and makeup fashion career of uh, Senator Miriam Defender Chicago. We'll be talking more. Than meanwhile, here's some from Mariah Carey. Chicago, who's our special guest for today? Mama, uh, if you weren't into politics or if you weren't into uh, uh, the things you did uh, in college and stuff, what, what would you have been? Well, as you know, I'm a lawyer by yes. profession. I probably have been, since I was already a trial judge here in Quezon City before I became a public figure, I'd probably be sitting in the Court of Appeals or in the Supreme Court, but you also know that in addition to my doctorate in law, I have a master's degree in religious studies. So it's so highly likely, Francis, that I would probably be sitting on a mountain top and play my needle. <laughs> <laughs> <I> play theology. <laughs> That's great. See, you would make a good nun. <laughs> So I'd be very activist as a nun. I'd probably move to impeach the Pope if I felt that he wasn't acting according to Catholic dogma. <laughs> liberation theology, is that what you would call it? Yes, I'm very serious about liberation theology because a third world country like the Philippines, the crushing poverty that oppresses the greater majority of the Filipino people is simply unjust. And uh, my political mission, therefore, as I see it, is social justice, the liberation of Filipino poor. Hey, that's great. Anyway, that's all, that's all that I have to say. That's great. Every guest, when you say that's great. Anyway, what do you do in your spare time? What are your hobbies? My hobbies are sports, first of all. Since I do so much eating and drawing, I don't even consider that a hobby. It's my <laughs> life's work. Uh, my hobbies are jogging, yes. swimming, preferably the ocean, because I don't like the chemicals in the swimming pool. <laughs> and uh, I play tennis with my family, and we play basketball together as well. There you have it. Mini, uh, mini info about uh, the good senator right here. Anyway, she loves swimming in the ocean. 
ocean because it's not polluted, of course. Life is where the ocean is. Meanwhile, uh, here's the PF. Choose a life, and we'll be right back. PM in Asia, 5 p.m. Philippines. And we'll put you in control of TV. you are, whenever you are. Choose your mode of communication and select the video of your choice. And we'll talk to you live on TV. Today, 4 p.m. in India, 5 p.m. Philippines. Only on MTV. Uh, we're still uh, here uh, with Miss Miriam Defensor Santiago. Ma'am, um, how many presidents are there? I mean, as of in the like uh, people who have submitted candidacies, how many for president? Ten too many. Actually, there are eleven of us. 11. Ten are exempt. This is eleven. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> eleven and uh, isa lang dapat dapat so yung po dapat wag na isa. Yung sa akin na lang. <laughs> That's a good way to uh, elect a president to have a lot of candidates. Yes, uh, to offer the electorate as wide a menu as possible is always preferable. Pero meron rin yung dependency of fancy dahil malamang the next president of the Philippines might only be a plurality president, not yeah. the choice of the majority. So he will, he or she will have a problem pulling a consensus behind national policies. That's a drawback from a field of 11 candidates. So with 11 candidates, about 15 or 20 percent is enough to win? Well, in a voting population of 3 million, or maybe 5 or 6 million would be enough to win the decided plurality. So you cannot say that our democracy is rule of the majority for all plurality to elect a president. That's the problem. Yeah, and 5 or 6 million. Yeah, the mga viewers ng MTV. <laughs> this is our vote strength. <laughs> wow, we are right. So, um, I should be running on a platform for Generation X or Generation MTV. And in fact, that's actually what I'm doing. Because I'm operating on the principle, the best test of a moral side is the kind of world that leaves children. I want to give to people like you and the young Generation X a world that is much better than the one we got. With the Philippines is the number two most corrupt in Southeast Asia today and is the number two up capital in the of the world. I just don't think that is right. Tama nga naman ang sinasabi niya. Bakit naman natin nisira ang image ng Philippines sa buong mundo? Dapat natin baguhin. Makakausapi pa natin more of Miriam later on. Here's an SMA storm. Candidate, do you like least and why? And another, do you have any soft spot for any of them and why? Wala. Dahil if I somebody I could respect, I certainly would not try. Extremely difficult what I'm doing, running without organized party machinery and without funding. Um, ayaw ko talaga trapo, or the traditional politician, in other words, in the Philippine political vernacular, yung corrupt na pili. <laughs> so, yun palang makikita mo, they so much money spent, they're even renting their rally crowds. And Filipinos, remember, if they spend that much money, the first thing they do once they get elected president will be to some more so that they can cover what they spend <laughs> the campaign. You were a while back, some of them uh, nang ahakot 150 pesos per head. Is that true? <laughs> yes. And also, you can see that they're taking, been taking TV at cost of about 98 pesos per 30 seconder. Where on earth did they get this money for crying out loud? They gotta be cruel. Yeah. Well, so, let's not talk about music. You know, music from, uh, like the eraser heads. Are you aware of them? Now that they exist, <laughs> you you exist now, okay? Uh, but I'm just a class music person. I'm afraid. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> Bitoy, okay, ito, gusto ni Senator. Do you aware of the Spice Girls as well? Oh, yes, definitely. I went to school in art in the summer, and the Spice Girls were definitely at the top of the charts. You know, the same thing, Spice Girl Power, Woman Power? <laughs> Third country ng Kamunas. We're not espousing one power, espousing people empowerment to give power to the poor. Anyway, uh, let's break out first.